Ooh, you better be ready to launch, folks. Prepare for impact. August 17th is coming. Today's session is uh, helping you to get ready to get ready. <laughs> you should be all ready. But uh, I feel like I'm having a lot of conversations, a lot of conversations every day in regards to the August 17th deadline. And what I'm sure of is that there's a little bit of anxiousness in the real estate world about what's coming how to prepare for it <laughs> and everything else. Um, that's interesting why that did that on, on Instagram. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I got distracted. And so I thought today we would do a session on like what you need to do beforehand and also after the fact. Uh, it's not very different from what we've been saying before, but I, I'm gonna give you some tools to help you, you know, better understand what's happening, but also give better service. Cause I feel like this August 17th deadline it shouldn't scare you. You should be excited. If you're a great agent, you should be excited because you're like, hey, I'm just going to get better. I'm going to be able to explain what I can do better than I used to. I'm going to pr provide more transparency to my clients, both buyers and sellers, and then just provide an ex exceptional experience. The ones that should be really worried are the ones that have been order takers that really weren't realtor members, right? If they, If we had to be honest, like, they weren't doing this all the time. They were like, oh, I'm going to get my license and uh, sell a couple houses here and there. And I've always said, like, you could be a part-time agent. There's nothing wrong with that. You just can't be a sometimes agent, I meaning you need to know what's going on in the industry. You need to go with know what's going on to better serve your clients. Because if you just, oh, I'm just going to do some paperwork and the rest will take care of itself. Wish you all the best. Okay. Hey, Esther, great to hear from you as well. Uh, and again, if you're watching this on Instagram, we are over on Facebook as, as well. Facebook, it's facebook.com slash jmanspeaks. There's going to be some screen sharing today, so you'll get a better viewing experience there, or you can also see it on LinkedIn or watch the replay on YouTube. All right, to get started, uh, first thing, first tool I want to give you that you'll be able to use with everything that we talk about today is our AI chat bot. I'm, I'm going to give it to you right off the bat. It's jmanabot.com is the quickest way to get there but I'm gonna put it in the chat. Unfortunately, the way Instagram works, you're not gonna be able to click click it. Okay, but that's it. I guess you could maybe copy paste, but I'm gonna put it on Facebook as well. That way you can click through there. So this is an AI chatbot that we've created. And just to give you a little bit of background, if you haven't watched any of our other sessions, the way it works is, Think of GPT, right? But now think of GPT if it was trained about the NAR settlement, if it was trained about buyer's agency, if it was trained about antitrust, code of ethics, fair housing, all of those things. I have trained my AI chatbot so that you can go in there and say, you know, tell me a little bit more about the settlement. There's actually, that's the first button I have in there, NAR settlement questions. Uh, and it will, if it's not sure, it will tell you to go to facts.realtor.com. Facts. It's my accent. Facts. F A C T S. Facts.realtor.com has the most up to date information about what's going on, any recommendations that they might have. They do have a handout for consumers in there as well. What I would do is take that, make it a little bit better, improve it, make it your own. They have one for buyers, one for sellers to better explain it. But where do we begin? Hmm. Where do we begin? I think the first part of it is understanding. Okay, review and understand practice changes because there's a lot of misinformation out there. I've heard gurus, gurus, air quotes, womp, womp, gurus saying things that really aren't correct. You know, so review the, the changes. What I do know is like many states, uh, their, their state realtor organizations are making recommendations and coming up with forms but then your local board is probably coming up with forms and then it trickles down from there. Then your broker should be coming up with forms that they approve of. So they kind of make it better because all of that should be vetted through an attorney. You shouldn't make up your own forms. You shouldn't mark up any forms that you receive uh, that have already been approved by an attorney. This isn't like other things that have happened in our industry. This is a huge lawsuit, huge. So when these changes go into effect, they're going to be monitored closely. 
Okay, I've seen some people just, hey, man, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Good luck, okay? <laughs> because first first offenders, I think, are going to get some, some penalties much higher than average just to make examples of them. That's just my personal opinion, not based on fact. So review and understand the practice changes. And then what I would do is any of the forms that you're currently using, you know, need to be updated, but also familiarize yourself with it. And, and I always like to incorporate an AI twist with everything that I'm talking about. So if you do have a form now that's finally approved by your broker, I would take that form and I would upload it to GPT, right? You hit the attach button, you upload the form and say, what kinds of questions do you think a potential buyer might have about this exclusive buyer agency agreement? It's going to come up with questions. How do you feel I can better explain it so that my buyer can fully understand it and feel comfortable? It'll give you even like a, a script, right? And I would practice that. Maybe sit down with somebody in the office and say, hey, I want you to be my buyer. I'm going to go over this form with you. And I want you to pretend like you don't know anything. Ask questions that you think a buyer might ask. It's better to do that ahead of time. That's called role playing. Many companies don't even do it. Many of them do it once a month, if that, or ever. Some are scrambling to do it now. Uh, and some companies do it every day. You know who you are, right? And so I think that's important. I'm, uh, update your, your agency agreements and your forms to be sure that they're aligned with it. Now, the next step for me, I think, once you have an understanding of it, clear, and and you know your broker has, you've gone through it with your broker and everything, and what your your standard operating procedures are within the office. Now it's time to inform, right? One of the five reasons you can ever reach out to a person, and I give you an acronym acronym to remember. It's visit. You can uh, vendor referrals is the V. I is inform. S is to survey. I is invite. And T is to thank them. Okay? Visit. So this is the inform part of it, but it could also be the thank them. You know, thank them. If you're calling your past clients, just thank them for being loyal and, uh, you know, being a, being a VIP client of yours. And you just wanted to update them with some of the changes in the industry. It doesn't have to be a phone call. It could be an email. You know, if you have questions, just reach out. If you're thinking, if you know somebody looking to make a move, or somebody's looking to sell, there have been some changes. Uh, we're experts in real estate and we'd be happy to explain it to you. Something simple like that, because if not, you're going to leave it up to the their friends that don't know anything or the media or the newspapers, okay? Now, feel free as I'm talking to go ahead and, and put it, any questions you might have in the chat. There's a ton of questions. Now, I, I'm not going to talk about commission rates. I'm not going to talk about anything that would be antitrust related. Uh, when I mention commission, I'm going to say compensation. Okay. Now, uh, once you start to implement these things, you have to make sure that you're doing it right. And I would almost like double check everything you're doing with your broker in the beginning. Like, Hey, you got this new listing going in. I just want to be sure this is okay. Right. Part of it has said that you're able to put concessions in if you look at the NER settlement, frequently asked questions, you're able to put concessions in the MLS, but you can't say that the concessions are specifically for compensation or that are only for compensation. You could say that the seller is willing to offer con uh, concessions. Okay. Now, uh, where do I want to go first? I think, yeah, I hold many open houses. How would you approach this with buyers as they come in? This is a good one. Hold on, I'm going to put this question up from my buddy John, Sarasota, I believe. Uh, I hold many open houses. How would you approach this with buyers as they come in and you don't know if they're working with a buyer's rep? Uh, you know, when in doubt, we're going to ask. Part of the code of ethics is that we, you know, not asking does not mean that you have made an effort to see if they're working with an agent. So somebody comes in and say, oh, hello, welcome to the open house. How did you find us? Okay, great. Okay, we just needed to sign in here uh, and make sure, are you working with an agent exclusively at this point? What do you mean? Well, do you have an agent that's your exclusive buyer's agent? No, uh, we talked to an agent. Did you sign anything with them? No, no, we didn't. We're not sure if we're gonna work with them. Okay, great, just sign in. At that point, uh, it, it has been clarified that they're not your buyer and then they're not another agent's buyer and they can tour the home. 
You don't need to pull out your buyer's agency agreement and go, hey, wait a minute. Before you come in, let's review what it is to be an exclusive buyer's agent. You need to sign this if you want to tour this home. That's not necessary because you can show the house. You're actually a seller's agent or sub agent of the seller at that point, And that's not necessary. Now, after they tour the home, if there is a question, you know, that may go towards you know, representing them exclusively, I would say, you know what, uh, you know, we're here at the open house. There's a lot of other people. I would love to give you the time that, that you deserve. If we could set up a time maybe later today or, or tomorrow at, at your convenience, I would love to go over um, what it means to have an exclusive buyer's agent work on your behalf and all of the things that it, all of the ways that it benefits you in finding the home of your dreams. Does that make sense? Okay, great get their information and then follow up. That's exactly how I would handle an open house, especially if it's busy, you got people coming through, you just can't give them the quality time that they deserve, okay? Perfect, good question, John. But here, I'm gonna give you all, because part of that conversation, and I said this, I don't know where I said this, but I'm gonna say it again. I think I said it in a reel, but some of you are setting your compensation amount or have historically based on what was being offered in the MLS, right? You're like, oh, they're offering this. All right, I'll work for that. Because uh, you haven't, you're not used to having an exclusive buyer's agent agreement signed. Now's the time for you to decide what your compensation is because there is no rate that's going to be offered to you. Now you're offering your rate to the seller. It's a negotiation, right? Um, and, and so just think about it like that. Cause people, I've heard people go, Oh, I could never get that. Why? Because historically they offered something else. None of that matters. It's an agreement between you and your buyer and the value that you're providing. So the more value that you can provide, the more it's worth. If you go, you know what, I'll work with you. And when you're ready to see houses, I'll show you and I'll write an offer. Mm. Is that worth more? I don't think so. Okay, but is that a model that some people will do? Sure, right? You you know, you just have to have an agreement signed. It doesn't have to be exclusive. It could be non-exclusive. You could say, hey, go out, you know, go to those gated communities and, and work with those agents if you want. Uh, you know, go wherever. If, if I, you know, if you want to see a house and it's in my area and I show it to you, fine. Here's my compensation. It's going to be a whole new world. And you have to be thinking different, like, I can't do that. They can't do that. They can do anything. Anything's negotiable. Okay. Now let me share this other screen to show you what I'm going to show you. Thank you for coming over to the book face. Which one I'm going to show you first. Yes. So discovering your unique value proposition. Unique New York. Discovering your unique value proposition, right? That's the promise of value that you make to your customers. I have a little thing of an elevator. You can't really see it all if you're on, on Instagram, but your elevator speech. You should be able to say to somebody, no, not what you do differently, but what you do better because what you do better is also different. Okay, like I've been in the business 19 years. It's 19 years experience. Don't you agree that if you're searching for the home of your dreams, having somebody that has that amount of experience uh, is going to be to your benefit as a, as a buyer? Yes, I do too. I have the highest, highest form of licensing that you can achieve in my state. I'm a licensed associate broker. That means I have the experience and the knowledge to be my own broker, but I choose to associate with a company. I also have additional designations. I am an accredited buyer representative. I'm a graduate of the Realtor Institute. I'm an e-pro. I am a military relocation professional. I am a seller representative specialist. I'm a senior real estate. And I go through each one of those designations. Here's what it means. Here's how long it took me. Here's how it benefits you. You see, like now I'm like building value, 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 value. And I just keep stacking it and stacking it and stacking it. So they go, wow, I'm impressed. You're worth it. So it's, it should, it, in the absence of value, compensation becomes an issue. But when you build the value, they're going to go, wow, yes, I want this person to represent me. Right? And I always use the doctor example. I went to my general practitioner because I had a foot issue. They didn't even look at my freaking foot. They told me it's fine. I took an x-ray. It'll, it'll be fine. Then I went to a foot doctor, which is a specialist, and I had to pay him $50 every time I went to him. I'm more than happy. You know why? Because he's fixing my problem. Just like if a buyer is looking for the home of their dreams, they're more than happy to pay compensation because you're that good, right? Think about it like that. All right, I get excited when I, when I start talking about this stuff. 
just like you should. Okay, but here's some tools. You got these tools, three tools. You should know this already, ChatGPT, Claude.ai, uh, and, and Gemini, gemini.google.com. What do I want? Right here. So take, take a picture of this. Um, imagine this is going to help you craft your unique value proposition. Okay. But you can go in there and just say, I'm going to move this down over here. Just put myself right here just for a second. Imagine I am a real estate agent of blank years. I would look, like to develop my UVP for working as an exclusive buyer's agent. And additionally, what I would say is what questions can you help me to refine that? When in doubt, it's like, because your prompts might be crap. <laughs> Mine might be crap, right? I, I think when in doubt, it's always to say, what questions can I help you to make this better? Or what questions can I ask you to ask me to make this better? And it's, it's going to ask you some questions. You're going to answer them, and you're going to make it better. That's your unique value, okay? That's how you identify your superpowers. And I think of it like a toolbox. I love giving metaphors. But think of it like a toolbox where... You know, a mechanic has a wall full of tools. You don't need every single tool for every job. But if I'm working with a first-time home buyer, here's the benefit of my unique value. It's not going to be all the things. It's going to be some of the things. If I'm working with a military client, psh, military relocation professional. My father's also a veteran. I can understand, right? And so it's like there's a tool for every client that you're working with to help identify your unique value, but you have to be thinking uh and refining this further because what more do you do? Do you help them find off-market properties? Do you have off-market exclusives in your office? Do you use AI to identify off-market opportunities? Do you, will you door knock in the, in the area where they wanna live? Will you send postcards? Will you do cold calling if that's allowed in the area where they wanna live? Like all of these things are truly above and beyond as a buyer's agent and I'd be more than happy to hire you, right? Instead of like, oh, there's nothing on the market, nothing yet. We'll just wait to see what happens. That's good enough isn't good enough, right? Anything worth doing is worth doing. Every, over, anything worth doing is worth overdoing. That's why I got my extra shirt on today. Be extra, be extraordinary. I used to think that uh, was a bad thing when I was younger because they would say, you're so extra. I'm like, guess what? Extra is called value. Boyaka! Okay. Um. Yeah, prep for a tropical storm here so that we can open houses are canceled. All right, I would love to hear more questions from you as we continue. But if you go, if if you're in the jmanabot.com, and I guess I'm going to put that, I'm going to do a text over like quick. That's where how you get to my AI chatbot. You can go in there and say um, unique value handout. And I have a couple handouts there for you to help you identify your unique value. You could also ask for the handout for my exclusive buyer's agent class. I think there's a handout button. You click that, it'll get all, all the things that I'm talking about today from a three-hour class. But let me do this, www.jman. I don't need www. If you don't know you need www, then we can't be friends. jmanup.com. Boom, 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 boom. One second while I do this. J man about okay jmanabot.com so go there this is an ai chatbot and i'll share this with you in a little bit of what it can do meow meow i'll put it right there okay i'm zooming from my phone how can we get the handouts um so just go to jmanabot.com that's going to go to my ai chatbot okay That'll go to the AI chatbot, which you can reach on your mobile. That should open up your mobile browser in there. Just type in handouts. You'll get it that way. Um, but then you just save save the link or save that browser or text it to yourself because you could do it on your desktop or your laptop. Okay. What about MLS? Are we filling in or not in compensation? It's not going to be in the MLS at all. Okay. You won't find it in the MLS at all. It will not be in the MLS. It will not be in the private remarks. It will not be in the public remarks. There could be no wink winks, like will willing to help out buyers, agents, none of that. Like take the high road with this. I absolutely would. Um, it can be advertised anywhere else. Okay. Except a website that's fed by an IDX feed is what they have said. Okay. That's what the clarification says. So 
Are there people that are putting websites together? Yeah, um, it could be done with an AI chatbot like I'm going to show you where you can update it with all of your listings. And then if somebody's, you know, you could say, you know, you could put a link in the private remarks that says, go to our AI chatbot for any real estate related questions. And then they say, oh, you know, what are the updates on the property? How old's the roof? How old's this? How old is that? And what's the compensation? I do think that many agents aren't going to ask what the compensation is before they show the property. They may do it at the time when the buyer is interested. Because I don't think it's realistic to, to think that every property that an agent's going to show, they're going to call ahead of time, and then the agent's going to answer and then tell them. I just don't see it. It's not happening now. Agents don't pick up their phone as often as they should. But I think when they're going to write the offer, they would say, hey, what's the offer of compensation? They tell them, okay, great. Now, I think it's, you know, you're, you need to go over all the scenarios with your client well before that. Here, there's three three different scenarios, right? It's they're going to make an offer of compensation that matches what we've agreed upon. It's going to be a little different, maybe a little less or a little more. Here's what's going to happen there. Or they're not going to offer anything. And in that example, or if it doesn't, you know, doesn't match, you are responsible. Now, if you cannot afford that, and with your permission, I can ask the seller to help us with that. Okay, and that's summarizing more or less what I would say. Now, what's coming up, what has come up in, in recent role plays is like, well, what if they say, no, we're not? Okay, well, give us an example. Okay, we're, gonna, we're not going to pay your compensation and we're at 500000 Okay, so what I'm hearing you say is if we counter at 500000 plus my compensation, would that be okay? Yeah. They'd have to think about it first or they just go, no, 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 we're not going to do it. Well, then I would say to the buyer, they're not going to lose this house because of that. We've already agreed that they're, they're, they can't afford my compensation and they need it. It's just like having concessions, right? If you're working with a first time home buyer and they need a 6% concession from the seller, that is not negotiable, right? They need it or they can't buy the house. Same thing. And we have to move on. It would, it would be on the seller side. Imagine if a seller didn't have much equity, offer came in, it was a little bit lower than they wanted, and they said, well, Mr. Listing Agent, I'll take it, except you have to take less for your commission. My commission's not under negotiation here, okay? The price is, we agreed on what my rate is when we sat down, did the exclusive right to sell, right? You'd think of it differently. You would never do that. You'd say, okay, well, we need to counter for more money so that we can make sure that you have enough to take care of all of your obligations, exactly how I would word that. Oh, I get, this is me in the morning, by the way. I get, I get excited about these things. Changes and challenges, these are just motivate me and it should motivate you to do, to do better. Okay. All right. What's the next thing you want to talk about? How can we improve as buyer's agents? That's what you're wondering, right? I would love for you to tell me, how can we improve as buyer's agents? Um, so the compensation is going to be negotiated during the offer process. It could be. Could be any number of ways. Uh, that's what I think. Now, am I seeing it can be advertised anywhere? I, I have seen already uh, agents that have put out sign writers with what the compensation amount is. I think what's important to, to realize is that it's not universal. It's not, you know, it's not, there's no standard and it's negotiable. So, doesn't matter. They could say, well, we're not going to, we're not paying. Okay. Well, if we bring in an offer, that's more than you expected and your seller nets exactly what they're, what they desire. Would you be willing to compensate us then? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Right. So it's important you practice this as a listing agent, but also as a buyer's agent. Um, well, as a buyer's agent, of course, but also as a listing agent, because yeah, if need be. Yeah. Uh, where are we? So just put put in the comments, put in the chat. I'm so used to being on Zoom and saying chat. Put in the comments, how do you how can we improve as exclusive buyers agents? I think finding off market properties is my favorite because that that alone, if that's all you could do better, like you have a lot of off market exclusives in the office, but if you're willing to pound the pavement for your clients and you're you're like, see how passionate ah, I will do that for you. If you're able to communicate that to your clients, then you win. Cause most agents won't. 
you're going to go above and beyond because that's how much you care. And people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Uh, Michelle, I do. Ask. You can ask the AI chat bot or just send me an email and I'll, I'll send you one. Anxiety is asking. That's great. So how can we improve, right? If we're doing this as a brainstorm, I think finding off-market exclusives is great. I think, you know, how can we deliver this exceptional experience to our clients in the beginning, right? Who do you specialize in? Is it first-time home buyers? Is it waterfront buyers? Is it condos? Is it co-ops? Is it investment properties? What are the resources that your clients desire in that early on in that process? Because that's part of what needs to be provided in order to exceed those expectations and for them to be like, I I want to work with you because you're awesome, right? If you just meet with them and go, oh, you know, we'll give you some things when you have questions. No, create, create all this. So wondering what your, what your frequently asked questions are, you know, and I wasn't, I wasn't actually going to show you this, but here's what I want to really want to show you. Uh, first of all. Okay. So let's just say I'm writing an offer. Uh, first of all, what thank if you. Did you a video? Thank you. Thank you for allowing us to submit this offer. Uh, but I just want to explain some of the important details of our offer, uh, starting with our pre-approval. Uh, my client is pre-approved. She has submitted all of her documentation to ESNL. Okay, I'm just going to pause it there because I want to take. I want to show you the whole video. But just doing things a little bit differently than other people are willing to do, right? We used to teach in the ABR class, present your offers in person whenever possible. I don't think that's as realistic anymore. But sending a video is being in person. It's being face-to-face -face when you can't be. And it's not, it's not a love letter, okay? Love letters are frowned upon by the establishment. You're not gonna write a letter anymore saying, oh, my family and my two kids really love this home. And we could see just walking down to the church down the street and like, there's like three fair housing violations right there. And you know, those letters, let's say somebody wrote a letter like that and somebody decided not to sell them the house because of what they wrote in the letter. Like, oh, this is a quiet neighborhood. We don't want any kids here. That's fair housing value, your fault, you sent, sent the letter. Okay, so don't send the letter. What's in the video is you you going over the, your offer, the terms and conditions of the offer, right? Here's my client, here's what they're offering, here's our escalation amount. Uh, they're actually pre-approved, not just pre-qualified, they, the, they actually have already submitted to, to underwriters, so they're pre-committed. They just need to find a property and order the appraisal. Uh, they work at this place. You know, they work um, in that example. They were a director at uh, uh, University of Rochester. Little or no chance of getting furloughed. They have a high down payment uh, and they're very flexible in their closing date. So if your seller needs more time, or if you want to close right away, uh, we could do post possession. So like explaining all those things in a video to help tell the story of the buyer that you're working with. Now, the reason why we do that is because other agents aren't going to do it, right? So that's a unique value, right? D differentiator. Then you copy your clients in on that so that your client sees that even if they don't get that offer accepted, because you're not going to get them all, you know, it's price terms, conditions, and sometimes you're not the one and them seeing that you did all these things solidifies their choice because they always have buyer's remorse, right? Buyers have buyer's remorse on everything. And it starts with you. Oh, I picked you and that early on in that process, they're like, am I really, should I, I don't know. Right? And so it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. Okay, so what's the next thing I want to talk about? Uh, she's approved up to up and. So if the buyer's agent sending the video, not the buyer. Correct. Thank you, Brian. Brian Anthony Mattis Phillips, come to us from Harlem World. Um, yeah, so it it's. It is the the buyer's agent. So when I send my offer, you know, I, depending where you are, like you're you're doing an offer to purchase, you're not writing your own contracts or anything, but still, it's like going over the terms and conditions of the offer. I put in a nice, pretty package. I actually have like a, a summary page that summarizes everything: the price, the down payment, uh, financing, if there's es escalation or not, uh, all of the things. So because I want to make it nice and easy for the for the agent as well, so they can see like it's a pleasure to work with me. If you haven't worked with me before, I've been in the business for a while. If you've been in the business while we've worked together at some point, right? Those relationships are also very important. And that's part of your unique value, right? If you've been in the business while, you got these great relationships. I know Brian, uh, to use you as an example, you do a lot of volunteering. You're, you're, you're involved with, with the committees and, and not-for-profits and things like that. 
that's huge because that person that you sit on a committee with is on the other side tomorrow on a multiple offer situation. They're going to know that you're going to be a joy to work with, right? That's part of your unique value uh, of what you're bringing to the table. Okay. Now, uh, one, where are we at next? We're not going to talk about escalation clauses right now. Okay, here we are. This is the AI prompt that I wanted to show you earlier. Bringing it, bringing it back over here. Three, two, one. Pew! Okay, so this is an AI prompt for GPT, Gemini, Claude, or whatever else. If you're using uh, Copilot, if you're using Meta, that Meta AI, Meta. What do they call it? It's a Meta AI, I think. I don't know. I haven't used it yet. I've used it a little bit, but everybody's trying to tell me it's so great. I'm, I'm too deep into the other ones right now. I'll go there when I have some extra time. So here, take a picture of this. These are your prompts that you would use with artificial intelligence. What are the benefits of working with an exclusive virus agent? That's the first one. Okay. Second one. What about working with me exclusively as a virus agent? What are some questions that you, you being AI can ask me to help refine this? And it's going to ask you questions and then you're going to do a journey into self-exploration. You're going to say, oh, what are the things that make me different? What are some experiences that I have provided that have helped my clients? It's going to help you refine this and make it better. Okay. And I would almost go three levels deep. After you answer those questions, what, are there any more questions that you could ask me to make this even better Then answer those? And then go a third time and go, I want to make this the best damn unique value ever ask me some more questions and then it's going to go even deeper. Okay. Then the third part is create a, uh, a list and a table format of the things that a buyer's agent does for his clients that he cannot do for customers. So this is the old Ben Franklin close, right? If I took out a piece of paper like this and I drew a line in the middle and I said, here's all the things that I can do for you as an exclusive buyer's agent. Oh, I need another page. And as a, as a, as you know, working with you as a customer, I, I have to be fair and honest. Which one would you prefer? <laughs> That's the close right there. And it's, it's honest, right? But these, these three prompts will change your life if you have not uh, used them in the past. Next. AI insights in buyer presentation. Now, these are just a snippets of a three hour class that I have, by the way, on AI exclusive buyer representation. So if you need somebody to come to your area, have voice will travel. I am a speaker, you know. So AI insights in buyer presentations, uh, prompt for generating an exclusive buyer agent presentation online. Again, take a picture so you can copy this later on, uh, but you can ask my AI chatbot Jay Manabot for it as well. Uh, it'll it'll give you a, a prompt, but craft an engaging and informative presentation that underscores the value and benefits of working with an exclusive buyer's agent in the real estate buying process. Now, perhaps you already have one because you got your ABR. ABR gave you a great presentation. Uh, Reback did, and but now is the time to be honest, right? Now is the time to update it because you got it from them. You didn't do much to it. You didn't customize it, and it's been the same for the last five years, 10 years, however long it was that you took it. Or if you took it this year, it doesn't matter. Let's make it better because it's generalized for everyone and you're not everyone, you're the one. Ah, I like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quote that somewhere, okay? So let's, uh, what do we wanna show them first? Here are my three. Uh, once you use that prompt, it's gonna actually give you uh, an outline. Like you see this here, it'll, it'll describe the slide, It'll describe the content and then it'll give you an image prompt. I say image prompt because then I'm going to use AI to create the images or I'm going to use an AI presentation creator. And I'm going to give you my top three here because that's the next thing you're going to ask me, right? What's your top three? What's your top three, J man? Well, I'll tell you what, here it is. Here they are. Beautiful.ai is my, my one. Uh, I like that. It's really nice. Uh, look at PowerPoint's been around for a long time. One of the challenges with PowerPoint, when you change things and you delete things, it doesn't automatically adjust. Beautiful.ai, not only can you create the presentation using AI, but then it has what, what are called smart slides, where you delete things, you add things, and it'll fix it for you automatically. 
you have data, you have graphs, you have charts you want to do. You just input the data and it makes charts for you. Uh, if you've ever tried to make a chart in PowerPoint, it can be problematic. <laughs> Drive me nuts. Um, then second one is gamma.app. And then the third one is trusted true canvas blue. I don't know. I needed to rhyme that there. But Canva's great too. Uh, they have AI built in right into their, their product. And I'm not just going to show you. I'm going to tell you. I'm not even from Missouri. That's the show me state, if you didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go to beautiful.ai right here. So here's a presentation that I created the last time I did this session. And it was based on the outline that I showed you. And so many things, like you see this photo here, I can go like this and just say replace image. And I can use AI. Where are you at? Um, here we go, generate with AI. This is powered by Dolly, which is also what GPT uses. Come on, don't be so laggy. Let's see what I want to do. Happy buyer in front of a modest home at sunset in New York City. And it's kind of an oxymoron. Modest home, New York City may not exist. That's why it's imaginary, Jeremiah. Okay, well, that's cooking. We're going to come back over here to Canva. And so with Canva, I went in there and as I said, exclusive buyer representation for real estate. It gave me some magic designs. I'm going to just, let's just pick one for fun. Apply all seven pages. And this took me just a few minutes. Obviously, you would apply a lot more time to this than, than I'm doing here. But exclusive buyer representation ensures undivided loyalty to home buyer's interest. Unique representation. Exclusive buyer representation real estate. Binding dream homes together. This is okay. Not the best. But if I went in here to templates, you can always get more. Search thousand exclusive. Buyer representation. Category. Yeah, I do camera. Do media like this. Do 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 do. Projects. Okay, and you go in here and you can find it. Third one is gamma.app. Uh, and again, I'm, I'll just show you this quickly for the sake of time. I'm gonna, I would fix all this introduction. This bothers me just looking at it. Okay, I would fix it. Don't worry. <laughs> but I'll go through it quickly. The buyer's advantage. Okay, you have understanding buyer representation. How we work for you success stories, navigating the market, commitment to excellence, your dream home awaits. This was all created by AI. I didn't add any content to this whatsoever. Okay. But if I came back over here, look, beautiful.ai, um, happy buyer in front of a home in sunset in New York city. Okay. I'll take this one for now. Okay. And I could adjust this, but here's what I like about this. Okay. We're going to go to the next page. Okay, type of heading. If I import data, you could import data based on the market. Okay, but I can edit the chart. Look at this. I can go uh, 23, 62, 10, 10. This could be amount of sales in the area. Could be list price to sale price ratio, whatever kind of data. You're dealing with engineers, they love this stuff. Okay, they love charts. Boom. So I want to come in here. I want to delete this one. I want to move it. Okay, I don't know if I get to delete it. Oh yeah, look, I could do it like that. I could do it like this. You can never do this in PowerPoint. But if I want to add a slide, look at these smart slides they have here. Structural, essential, data and chart slides, impact slides, funnels, comparison slides, people slides. What would I want to do here? I do arrow bars. 
Okay, you type a heading, you type the text, does it all here. You know what, I want to delete this one. Boop. Delete this. Look at that. Does it automatic. That's why I love it, okay? Wait a minute. Introduction exclusive buyer's agency. She looks scary. I would definitely replace her. This looks like a, like a what is it, supper wives or whatever. They're like, hi, I'm a robot. It looks a little, a little creepy. Understanding your needs, in-depth market knowledge, access to exclusive listings, expert negotiation skills, guidance to the buying process, professional network advantage, Jane Doe, that would be you, Jane or John Doe, and then you can continue from there. Now, if you had an existing presentation, what you could also do with AI, and I'll, let me just show you how, where you do this, hold on. Return to the library. If you had an existing presentation, uh, you could always upload it into AI and say, how can we make this presentation better? Uh, I always like, like to ask open-ended questions because then it's going to give me their advice, give me its expert advice on how to make a presentation or how to make handouts, how to make brochures, how any of your content that you have for clients. Okay. So you do this, generate with AI. You take the outline that was given to you from GPT. You do it here, train AI with additional context, text, and you paste it all in there. Boom! And it'll create it for you. Okay. All right. Now, let me finish off with some AI chat about business. Standing on business. Standing on business. Okay. So here's just an example of the mineral team. NASA's, me and my wifey. Okay. Now, this was this is an AI chatbot. Think of it. This could be it. It is an overlay onto your website. So think of like a little chat box in the corner of your website that actually provides value because most chatbots these days they're not good. And you ask for help, and you ask for representative, and they just don't do anything. Okay. But let me go in here. I'm just going to say, what is my home worth? Do they ask that a lot? Of course they do. Oh, absolutely. If you're curious about the value of your home, visit it out. Oh, wow, look at that. Contact us page. And then it links to another link where they fill out something on what's, what is their home worth. Oh, you want to be a VIP client, do you? You put VIP client there because everybody wants to be a VIP, right? Absolutely. Become a VIP client with us. Here's what you do. Join our VIP client network. Beep, beep. As a VIP client, you gain access to exclusive resources, guides, and personalized support to make your real estate journey smooth and successful. If you have any questions, don't reach out. Welcome to the VIP club. Oh, wow. I'm so special. Value, value, value. Okay. FAQ. And it, there'd be more FAQs than what's going to come up here, but check this out. How can I find out what my home is worth? That's probably number one, right? And you could personalize this in any way you liked. Just, this is mine. It's my example. Do you have resources for sellers? Absolutely. You can find our comprehensive Monero team sold guide here and our VIP client learning library here. Boom. How can I find out what my home is worth? Can you get a free clearance right here? We're going to fair housing notice. How can I start a search for homes? Okay. And then there's more, our VIP client. Let me show you buyer resources because you're going to get a kick out of this. And I think what I'll have to do is share my entire screen at that point, but we'll just give it a second. Okay. So let's view the guide. Oh, good. It's going to open up in here. And so rather than just have a PDF or like originally when I did this, I was like, it, it linked to my Google drive and in my Google drive, you could download it, but it was like, Meh. It was like, that's not enough. It's not enough. We have to do more. We have to do more. So I decided to make it a flip book, right? Step one, make that like, oh, cool. Hazine is the recommended flip book uh, provider from Canva. So you can create a design in Canva or have your graphic designer create a design in Canva. Hazine is like one of their integrations. Okay. Now, once I flip it open, Listen, listen to the words. Just in a day not two, here for you it's true. Real estate heroes fly through the deals you buy. They find your perfect spot, dream home on the dot. Come on, you ain't never seen nothing like that, okay? A flipped 
flip bookie scene, but then our theme song is playing in the background, my friends, which I created with a I. Uh, okay. Now <laughs> I tell you, I get a little too excited for this, but then our VIP client learning library, uh, I was originally just calling this like buyer resources. I didn't like that. It didn't seem great enough because we have a lot of a lot of resources. So to access the library, again, this used to be it used to be like a bleh. It was like here, you know, you can download all these things from our Google Drive. So we went, there's a, a program called notion.io. Just you'll find it. It's the best note taking program, but you could actually publish any page of your notes as a website. And so that's what I did here. And so look, we're glad you're here, whether you're buying your dream, right? Buy resources, sell resources, seven reasons to work with a realtor, seven reasons to own a home, questions when choosing a realtor. Here, let's see what this is, Jay. Okay, so they have all this information, agency and agency relationship, prepare for house hunting, what you need to know about credit scores. Prepare to finance a home. Questions to ask when choosing a lender. Financing a home. Questions to ask about the neighborhood. Considering a condo or HOA. Questions to do when home inspector. Mortgage application checklist. Ask them when you're making a short sale offer. How to buy in a tight market. Transaction documents. What to check for your clothes on your home home. What do you know about homeowner insurance? It's a learning library, my friends. Okay? And now I'm just going to open up to questions now because I feel like... I did more than I expected to today. <laughs> uh, a lot of times these are just conceptually like, I'm like, here's what an idea, what I want to talk about and we'll see where I take it. And I just let it flow, let it flow. So what are, what are some questions that, how can we help you to be better agents? Um, if you have questions, you don't feel like chat, putting it in the comments, you could always send us a message on messenger or Instagram DM. If you're watching this on Instagram or Good old fashioned email, jman at jmanseminars.com. So do we have any other questions that I did not address? Uh, hey, Elizabeth was here teaching in North Idaho. All right. Um, did you create all those files or did they draw from a resource? Oh, good question, Marianne. So I did draw from a resource, NAR. If you go to nar.realtor, search up handouts for consumers. I think that's what it was. Uh, a couple of years ago, I got it. It probably should, should still be on there. And then what I did is I took those handouts for consumers, which you can use and reuse uh, without any issues. That's what NAR wants you to do. But then I improved them. I made them better. I made them prettier. I added more you know, images. Now I still have PDFs as well that could be used as uh, listicles or handouts, right? somebody had a question or you want to create some video content and say, Hey, do you want the top five reasons why you need to work with a realtor today? Click below and you can download our free list, right? Those are called listicles. Let's see. What do you think? Good. All right. Well, I appreciate you all. This is Jeremiah's J man Monero with J man speaks. Uh, if you're watching this on the replay, please be sure to like, and subscribe. Wherever you are, if you got any value out of this today, please share it with a friend. Jeremiah's J. Man Monero, J. Man Speaks. Make it a great day.